So how, how did you transition from diva into this world of film and television and commercials and video games? Well, our, our influences were pop music, but also we were listening to music everywhere, elevators, um, TV commercials, and um, somewhere along the line, a friend of mine uh, said, do you want to score my movie? First he asked me to score his um, live show that he was doing, I think at the Roxy, with uh, Paul Rubin. And I, I was busy with Devo, and then he said, I got a film you want to score it, and I'm like, I'm on tour all this year with Devo. And so he made a film, uh, a P.B. Herman's Big Adventure. And then the next year he says, well, now I'm doing a TV show. And he knew that Devo was no longer on Warner Brothers. We'd signed a bad deal with Enigma Records, and they were going bankrupt at the time, and it was, everything was frozen. And so when he said, do you want to film my TV show, it sounded like a really great idea. So um, it was the first thing I ever scored. I knew nothing about it. He was in New, in New York at Broadcast Arts, and they'd film something, and on Monday they'd send it to me. Tuesday I'd, I'd write the music. Wednesday I'd record it, and Thursday I had to mail it back to him. So I'd, I'd have a three-quarter inch tape, and, and I'd send that with a real to real quarter inch tape back. And um, I remember at the end of the seat, it was exciting, because, you know, it's like, You'd see it on a Monday, and then on a Saturday, it was on TV. And, you know, I, I'd be you know, sending stuff off on Thursday, and I'd go, I know that scene where he's making a, a double entendre joke about dykes and sticking his thumb in one, you know, and uh, is not going to make it on TV. And, and then you'd, you know, so how oh, am I even writing the music? But you'd do it anyhow, and then and you'd, Saturday would be gone. Because they were so far away, and, and I mean, it was a very atypical show, I didn't, I didn't have producers all over me or, or people that are, were fretting constantly. They were just thankful that they got any music at all back on time. So, so it was a good way to just kind of accidentally fall into the business. Was Wes one of the first people that you started to work for? Um, I did a bunch of films before I worked with Wes, but, but I got a call from somebody at Sony and they said, we have this guy who's an interesting filmmaker He's freaking everybody out, and he'll only talk to one person for a composer. And so they asked me to come screen his film, and I went to a screening where I think I saw a record number of people walk out, and it was on Auto Rocket. It was like they'd, they'd you know, like done a focus group with high school kids, and like 90 kids walked out, and they were writing things like, how come we didn't get to see her tits? And stuff. And like, on the cards, you know, they were like jerks, you know. And, but, but, you know, I watched his film and I thought, even with his, you know, kind of his temp music, I thought this guy has an interesting vision and um, an interesting take on our culture. Wes was interesting in that um, he had a very particular palette where he didn't like bass sounds, he didn't like brass, he didn't like um, low sounds except for an acoustic bass was the only low-sounding instrument he liked. And um, I watched every movie. I watched his um, palette rock, so, uh, where he started letting more instruments be played on his film. It, it, it's, he's like, um, I've worked with a lot of directors, and some of them you wouldn't really attach the word artist to their name. You know, some of them are, you know, like there's been this whole thing in Hollywood where where once they wanted to find people that they could control, they started pulling directors out of the commercial world and things like that, you know, people that were used to just doing whatever the client told them to do. And um, they're easier to handle. And then I've worked with a, a bunch of artists, too. I've worked with people that truly made art, and I would put him in that category for sure. Is it different scoring video games? I know you did The Sims 2 and 3, a bunch of games and, and video games, but um, what's the process like? Is it different to do that than television or film? Yeah, uh, video games are really a different uh, different process. And, uh, How so? Well, they, they have a whole different level of possibilities because you're doing something that, that, you know, a movie, you go and you see it once and maybe you see it twice, or if you're, even if you're eight years old, maybe you'll see it 
six times, you know. But if a video game, it can go on for hundreds of hours. It can take up somebody's life. And so, so when you're writing music for that, you know, you do have limitations for how much space you can have, but you have to do things to make the music stay interesting. So you're scoring something, you'll record, you know, maybe just bass lines that are legato, and it's the start, and, you know, Homer Simpson's running through a game, and he's looking for, for fast food to eat, and then as he gets more things, and you, you, the game gets more frantic, then it starts adding on the strings that are playing at double time to, the, to what the, um, the bass range instruments were playing, and then more things can click in, and you, you have to write this music so that at any point when somebody reaches a, a goal or turns down an alley or, or explodes an alien's head, uh, that changes the tone of the music. So it's, it's a whole other set of things to think about, and it makes it kind of... Um, it makes it kind of really fun because it's like um, the intellectual process is, is very different.